The Saturday before school started was always an event to Henry Jones. It was the last party of summer. My sister loved summers of kegs and fireworks, romance and flings. She sat cross-legged on the floor of her bedroom in front of her mirrored closet doors. Her short dress hiked high on her thighs as she spread a sea of cosmetics on the carpet around her. She ran a streak of foundation under each eye, highlighter down the bridge of her nose, and bronzer beneath each cheekbone, a layer of armor before battle. Because that's what these parties were to her. A war on all the heartbreaking boys in the San Francisco Bay Area. I stretched across her bed on my stomach as Henry blended the whole thing together. I could have watched her apply makeup for hours. Holding my chin in my hands, I waited for something I could confirm as an invitation to the party. It wasn't so much that I wanted to go, but I wanted to spend Saturday night with Henry. She rimmed each of her eyes in royal blue liner and met my stare in her mirror. Andy asked me about you today. What did he want to know? We were hanging out in the hate, me and him and Ari and Mick. You know Mick. He's got those gorgeous blonde dreadlocks. And Andy asked if I'd mind if he took you out sometime. I rolled onto my back and stared up at her spinning ceiling fan. I hope you told him there was no way in hell I'd go. She bit her smiling lips, the way she always did when I slipped in a word like hell and recapped her eyeliner pencil. What do you think I said? Knowing Henry, she could have told him anything. Well, of course I told him you've been dying to get a piece of him forever. You didn't. I sent a throw pillow sailing at her head. Henry ducked, and the pillow thudded against the closet doors. Of course not. I told him not in a million years did I think you'd say yes. She added another coat of mascara and glanced back at me. Pass me my purse, will you? The top drawer of her dresser was open a crack. Enough for me to see what was hidden between her silky thongs and see-through bras. A package of birth control pills. Henry never had to tell me she was having sex but I knew. I'd watched her at a pool party last weekend. With a beach towel wrapped neatly around the waist of my one piece, I sat in the shade while Henry lounged on the first step of the pool. My wild blonde curls were piled on top of my head in a bun she'd styled for me that looked more like an old lady's beehive. I kind of loved it. In 60 or 70 years, we'd both wear our hair that way every day. Jake Holt's hand stroked through her silky hair, from root to tip, never once snagging on a tangle or a split end. She curled into Jake, arched her fully inflated breasts against his chest. That was when I knew any semi-state of her virginity was a thing of the past. I was 15, my sister Henry 16, and I didn't know what could happen in that one year between our ages, but I was just as worried it would happen to me as I was worried it wouldn't. Girls, our mother called up the staircase. I left some files at the office, so I'm running back downtown for a few hours. The pizza will be here in 20. Our mother had been busy keeping up with her work schedule and playing the new role of single mother. Too busy to know Henry spent the weekends with her arms and legs hanging out the windows of moving cars and her lips pressed against the mouths of whatever boy had snagged her attention for the night. And she didn't know Henry always brought me along to the parties, a silent witness. My sister didn't acknowledge her, so I said, Thanks, Mom. He's jangled as Mom hesitated. Oh, and, um, if something happens and you don't feel comfortable driving, I'll have my cell. Henry? You've got it. Henry said. If anyone at all drinks and drives, you'll be the first to know. Henrietta Jones, I mean it. Henry cranked up the music after Mom backed down the drive. Within the chaotic walls of my sister's bedroom, there were only two volumes to music, loud and louder. Laughing, she shouted, Prepare yourself, Em. This is the year I bring you to the dark side. She pulled me onto the bed and never releasing my hands from hers, we half-danced, half-jumped to a Red Hearts song that vibrated inside my ribcage. 